hello guys and welcome to another episode of my lecture on today's episode we'll be talking about the sufficient contemporaneous rule and how it is significantly different from that of the strict contemporaneous rule you know applied by the common law court in r versus Bedingfield. now let's go straight to my notes now the role of strict contemporaneity was severely criticized for doing injustice and a more liberal approach was later introduced in the case of Ratin VR. A telephone operator who was the witness in this case got a call from the deceased who hysterically stated that her husband was about to kill her before the phone went off. Now, the court held that this is not hearsay and admissible as part of res geste doctrine for being sufficiently contemporaneous. Do note that the difference between this and Aaron Bedifield is that here, the person was on the phone. That means that the act was not being done at that time. Do you understand? The act was not being done. So the person just said, ah, my husband is about to kill me or there is serious danger or something is about to go on. Now, at that point, when she called the um, telephone operator, the act has not been done so if we were to apply the strict contemporaneous rule it would not apply do you understand because then that particular statement would not be admissible but then lord wilberforce said something lord wilberforce now gave a new test for the res geste rule he said that the fact shouldn't be whether the statement was part of event or transaction that means that the fact should not be that it is contemporaneous like strictly which means that it's not that oh the act is currently going on the statement was made at the same time that is for those that were made after when we are talking about the statement either before or after now he said that what we should do is that the judge must satisfy himself that the statement was so clearly made in circumstances of spontaneity or involvement in events such that possibility of concussion or fabrication can be disregarded but if however the court considered the statement was made by way of a narrative of detached prior events so that the speaker was so dis regarded from it as to be able to construct or adapt his own account she should exclude it or he should exclude it it is no longer a question of strict contemporaneity but rather if the maker had enough time to concord fact to his advantage question of fact it is no longer was the statement made according to the act like where they going like this and like this the statement the act the statement the act according to aaron Bedenfield, that was a rule that was followed in aaron christie that was followed in aaron tepper that was followed in david and fortia although that was more of civil case that was also followed in thompson and traveron so is the statement made with the act lord wilberforce in the case of r and ratin or ratin versus alice telling us no don't look at it from the perspective look at it from the fact that the judge now this then gives the judge discretion the judge will look at the fact and ask has there been time for this particular witness to be able to or the person who made the statement to be able to concord his own version of the story that should be the question so if we were to apply that rule to that of Aaron Bedingfield, someone's throat has just been slashed and you think that the next thing that the person will be thinking about how to concord stories i mean if we were to apply the rule by lord weaver force in the case of ratten versus r i don't see how somebody is about to die and throat is like literally slashed and then you are saying that the person is concocting story or we go to the case of Aaron christie where somebody has been assaulted a boy and then when the police came the boy then would start concocting stories as to who assaulted him i mean the only thing that is in the person's mind is this is the man that assaulted me do you understand so if we apply this to the case of ratin and R, what lord weaver has said you would see that i think i agree more with what lord weaver is saying the judge should satisfy himself that there has been no time or according to the fact that has been presented to the court there is no likelihood that the person who uttered that particular statement had enough time or whatever it is to concord his own version of the story so let us look at other cases that seem to have applied the sufficient instead of strict contemporaneous rule 
we look at the case of R versus Nile and Loan. Loan was charged with assaulting Lucas immediately after a car driven by Nile had run into Lucas' car. Police came shortly after Lucas was recovering from the blows. He then identified Loan as the assailant. The court held that it was spontaneous as Lucas wasn't in a condition to concoct a story while recovering from his assault. If we look at the case of R versus Andrews, which is also very, very important, the appellant and another broke into the victim's house, stabbed him, and went away with his property. The police came minutes later, and the victim, seriously wounded, identified the appellant and the other man as the assailant before going unconscious. The court held that this was part of res geste being made by a seriously injured man in circumstances that were spontaneous and continuous with the attack and that there was no possibility of concussion or fabrication. The House of Lords therefore expressly overruled in the case of R and Andrew. You should know that Lord Weberforce in the case of R and Ratin created the sufficient contemporaneous rule but the ruling r and beddington was expressly overruled in the case of r and andrew and lord Akna summarized the principle as thus number one possibility of concussion if there is a possibility of concussion you should strike it out number two event must be so unusual and startling or dramatic as to dominate the thought of the victim such that the utterance was a distinctive reaction to events and not just a form of reasoned reflection number three statement must be spontaneous and so closely associated with events that it can be further stated that the victim's thought was dominated by the events Number four, the judge must be satisfied that the circumstances were such that there was no possibility of concussion to the advantage of the maker and accused disadvantaged. There must be no special feature likely to result in error, for example, drunkenness and the rest. So, we have seen that according to the sufficient contemporaneous rule, Aaron Andrew has laid certain tests for us let the judge satisfy himself that there is no concussion of story no fabrication of story there is no possibility that that particular act that has been done must have dominated the mind of the victim just like we can see in the case of aaron andrew the thieves came into his house beat him up into you know punching bag and then they they took away his stuff and then when the police came into the house the victim already like almost to be unconscious identified the accused before he then became unconscious if you apply the rule in R and Bedingfield the court will say ah well she be they've come to carry his load and then they've gone they've beaten him they've gone then that particular statement where he identified them cannot be said to form part of resgate state but the court in R and Andrew said that that particular act must be such that it must dominate the victim's you know thought so much so that the victim likelihood of concocting fact is very very less do you understand that and other rules as established in the case of r versus andrew also in the case of ratin versus r by lord weberforce applied in the case of r and nile and loan you know when you look at these cases which are very very important for you to cite in your exam you would see that you know the sufficient contemporaneous rule has expressly overruled the case of R versus Bedingfield, where we talk about the strict contemporaneous rule. Now, with that, we close our lecture on the common law doctrine of res geste, and now we move to the Nigerian experience. Whether or not we can say section 4 can be said to be the common law doctrine. And if it is, was it the old rule that is strict contemporaneous rule in R and Bedingfield? Or is it the new rule that is the sufficient contemporaneous rule in R and Ratin as well as R and Andrew? Do you understand? A lot of other factors that we'll be looking at and also the Nigerian cases. So I'll see you in my next class.